Hi, I'm Andrew, the Young Adult and Media Librarian at North Brunswick Public Library. Here, I looked out into space and wondered what there was out there, and there was a way that you could have a career where you would explore that. Uh, and do you think that career should be open to people regardless of their genders? If so, then you may be interested in participating in our program for teens, Girls Steam Ahead. It's actually, a, we're actually following a program devised by NASA, specifically division of NASA known as the Universe of Learning, um, which is really about empowering girls as well as boys to uh, look, think about STEAM and STEM and, and, and about space in terms of their own lives. Now, you don't have to be a girl to participate. You just have to uh, be interested in this, in this kind of a program. And our next meeting is May 24th at four o'clock. Now, if you haven't seen any, I can give, I'm going to give you an example of some of the things that we look at. And again, this is something that NASA has shared with us, right? So this is a, this is a particular website is all about looking at the forms of light. What kind of lights are there? All right, well, we start out of this pretty, pretty typical scene, right? This is, we're looking at the visible light. Now, why is it good to know about these different types of light here? Uh, one of the things we'll be looking at is we'll be looking at images that are taken by telescopes and the different telescopes will record different kinds of light and what kind of lights they are shows different things about the objects that they're looking at. So we're going to start out here on Earth, an ordinary day, and here are some examples of visible light. You can actually find some other examples too if you want. All right. There's also you can also take a look and see what else there is. This is infrared light, right? So we're looking at heat. Obviously, the sun will give off a great deal, right? Something that's a little cooler will have less of that. Radio and microwave. Remember, when you're using your microwave, you're really using light. If your eyes can detect radio waves and microwaves, you could see light carrying information to radios, phones, and computers. I think that microwave radiation that you use to cook, to heat up food, it's really, you know, this is really just one type of light here. Let's go the other way, All right? Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet light has shorter wavelength and higher energies in visible light. Some examples here. Like a little bit. Of course, x rays. Right. Now we're dealing with some pretty powerful light here. It's the sun's corona, supernova, x ray imaging machine. All right, we're getting into some intense light here. And what's really intense here, the gamma rays, colliding neutron stars, solar flares. You know, what does this show? It shows all these kinds, you know, I think of all these types of radiation. Well, what is radiation, right? We get without, but kinds of light. Now, we're going to take that. We're going to take a look at this particular image. All right, one thing, we're going to look at some really cool images of what's going on in space. Things that we can't see with our naked eyes or with your average telescope. Here's the Helix Nebula expelling mass as gaseous wind. If we're just looking at the infrared light here, all right, remember, remember different telescopes are different, will record different types of light and maybe combine them. Uh, this is what it gives off. Worm dust around star remnant, gas and dust thrown into space. Now we're looking at the visible light. Thousands of comet-like like filaments likely formed when hot stellar winds and radiation flowed into colder shells of gas and dust. Ultraviolet, the central white dwarf and the surrounding shells of gas shine brightest in ultraviolet because they're so hot. X-ray, 
active core of a distant galaxy, intense rays from the central white dwarf, multi wavelength. All right, put it all together. The Helix Nebula has small and large features as well as cooler and hotter components, and the dust sees the space around it. So really, these you know, because these different types of light uh, will show different images. Sometimes, so sometimes these these powerful telescopes will combine the lights to give us the full picture. So if this is this is the kind of thing that you're interested in here. Uh, if you think that if you think that you'd like to find out more about this, you can email me a Gerber at North Brunswick Library .org. And if yeah, if if you have anything you need to tell me about maybe technology limitations, or if you have any uh, lear learning or neurodivergent uh, differences uh, that need to be accounted, please let me know. Uh, and you know, we'd love to hear from you. A couple of years ago, we were we, you know, we had a actual, an actual scientist uh, speak to us remotely, and uh, it would, yeah, I think that it might be interesting to have that again. I'd love to have some feedback so we can know what to so we can know that that's what we want to do again. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, my email is a Gerber at North Brunswick Library .org. Uh, so that's how you can get in touch with me and let me know that this is something you'd like to participate in. Thanks a lot and happy watching.